Good morning. Good morning. I'm having some tea this morning. It is chilly here. So cheers. Cheers, cheers. I'm waiting for people to get on. I'm a little bit I'm a little bit of a gulper. <laughs> So for those who don't know my little quirk about tea, oh, I can see the sun is trying to get through the fog, so that's good news for later. So my little my little quirky thing about tea is that I have tea, uh, this is my third cup. I usually have two in the morning, and I have one every day at four, no matter what, no matter what. But here's my quirk. It's not a quirk. People in over in... Uh, England and Belgium will understand what I'm talking about. I only drink my tea in bone china. So this is a bone china cup. And the reason is it tastes better. <laughs> I swear to you, it tastes better. There's something about, hold on, ready? I should stick my finger up, hold on. <laughs> There's something about um, it tastes better, it stays hotter than a, a big, thick American mug, um, the coffee mug, so. <laughs> Don't worry, I haven't started yet. I'm just, just cheersing. Oh, hold on, let me get my glasses on. Hello, good morning, good morning. Okay, you guys, I have been up for, I'm always up anyway. I get up every day at 540, but I have been out and about already. Today was the Monterey Dahlia Society tuber sale. And lucky for me, that sale was down the street from my house at our sort of grocery store. Tell everybody, tell everybody where you guys are from too. I wanna know everybody's from all over the place and some of our new friends, where are you from? Um, anyway, so I have been up and out and the sale is so funny, you guys. They didn't have it for the last two years because of, of COVID. And um, you go and if anybody loves dahlias, you know, you can divide them, you know, dig them up every year and divide them up and you have individual little tubers to sell. And so this is the Dahlia Society sells their tubers and that's how they raise money. And oh my gosh, they probably made a million dollars today. So I, <laughs> so I, <I'm> in. <laughs> So I, so I have to get in line early. It's a nine o'clock in the morning, open the door, and it is like people just start running with their box. And so I got in line at 8.30 and had no idea what I was doing. No, I just grabbed whatever tuber I could find. I have no idea if they're in good condition or not. I spent $140 on tubers. <laughs> So I think I have 30 plants to plant, 30 tubers to plant. But for $10, I joined the society and I'm going to learn how to be a Dahlia farmer. <laughs> you could take a slide to buy. Oh yeah, I could have. <laughs> that would have been so much fun. So as a society um, member, I will be able to volunteer next year and get the inside scoop and buy early. So I want you guys to know that we'll be growing dahlias. I will be showing you all my dahlias when they come into bloom. And sad news on the deer is that I thought I had really got them figured out, like we fenced up even more from last week. And last night they came and ate the seven buds that I had left on my roses, so. You know, it's a hard life being a farmer, being a flower farmer, so. But it's something that I love to do. And, you know, I love art, of course. And I feel like a lot of artists, I feel like all of us, I think somehow we're all farmer, dahlias, like growers, lovers, flower, anything. And so they kind of go together. It's probably why all my, my plants are. My little kitty cat, that's a studio cat now. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, kitty, kitty, kitty. Maybe you'll see her. So. Did I tell you guys the story about Basil, my kitty cat, who was so, let's see if she'll, let's, come here, girl. Come here. Oh, my God, come here. Let's see, you wanna say hi, everybody? Okay, so you guys, this is Basil. Basil. So Basil is for, Basil, you're hurting me. <laughs> so, ba 
So basil, oh hey, hold on. Basil wants to get down. Basil is four, <laughs> 14 years old and we got basil right after, well, we didn't know it, but our, our lab, who we, our lovely lab who passed away, Chief, who um, was my husband's first child, he was older when we got Basil. Basil was a kitty that was found under a porch. And so I picked her up from the SPCA and then Chief died. And then Basil was our like main cat and only cat uh, actually. And for four years, she sort of like ran the house and was a mouse hunter and we loved Basil. And then we got Scout. And Scout, let me tell you, <laughs> Scout does not like Basil and Basil really does not like Scout. So for the last 10 years, Basil has been in my room and she won't come out of my room. Upstairs in the bedroom, the, the windows are open. She goes in and out. She goes on the roof, down a tree, gets her my, mouse, brings the mouse up into my bedroom, drops it at my feet. And this would go on for years and years. And then lately, she has been really jumping around in the middle of the night, like literally on my face. And so I decided I'm gonna turn her into a studio cat and it's been a week and she is loving it because I'm here all day and I get to hang with her and she hangs with me and then she sleeps in here at night. I don't let her out at night because um, I don't know. I just feel I don't wanna leave the doors open to my studio quite yet. And um, so that, that's, oh, I am rambling. And that's my story of my, <laughs> my cat, my tubers and whatever else I'm talking about. But I do wanna show you, before we start talking and doing our mandalas, I wanted to show you these flowers because they are gorgeous. So look at these, are they ah, unbelievable? This is an orchid that my stepmother, Mark's stepmom grows and she just comes and gives me like the stem, like here you go. And, she, and I think they last a really long time. So these are not the orchids that grow inside the house. These are orchids that are, um, there's a name for them. And I have two of these plants, but nothing as gorgeous as this white one. I mean, is that amazing? So beautiful. And then these little sweet, and I thought it went well in this um, vase with these guys. So these beautiful, sweet, tulips and ranunculus and what else is in here little iris my son um they're kind of this one's kind of wonky my son was in a dance recital with his girlfriend <laughs> so i posted it i posted a few photos of that my son was in a dance recital with his girlfriend um She's on the dance team, my niece is on the dance team, they're incredible, and every year they do a showcase and, the, and then they invite the guys to come dance. So that was really funny. But I got a couple of these bouquets to give to the girls and a couple for me, so that's them. And I thought, you know what I was gonna do with th that bouquet in particular, because I love like the little ranunculus and the little tulips is that next week I'm gonna use that for my inspiration to do some fun watercolors and I'll, I'll show you guys that stuff too. So anyway, okay, what else I have to tell you? Um, our Ukraine donations, I'm so excited you guys. So I think we're at about $2,200. I'm almost positive we're close to that. So next week I'm gonna send out the two different checks to the two different um, organizations and I will share that with you guys in the group and let you know. And then my three paintings are being sent out this week and I'm so excited to send them out. And so if you have a sunflower painting that you did and you wanna part with it, I think anybody that has any affiliation to Ukraine and they have um, relatives or friends and that's their home mother country, I think they would love a painting or something like, or drawing. I think it would be a, a really sweet thing to do. So, and that's up to you, but um, you can take that class if you took it as many times as you want. You always have that forever, the password to get onto that. And if you haven't done it and you wanna do it, the replay is available and it's only $20. And so we have raised 2,200 bucks. That's pretty awesome, so thank you. And I love seeing everybody's sunflowers, it's beautiful. 
Um, okay, two other quick little notes is one, um, I sent an email, I sent a newsletter email yesterday, I think it was yesterday, and I mentioned it last week, but I'm doing a challenge, just kind of, I don't know, it's not really a challenge as much as that's the name of it, because that's all I could think of, because I didn't want people to think it was like all day. For some reason, workshop feels like that's all day. But on April 12th, 13th, and 14th, I'm gonna be live probably for like 90 minutes at 10 o'clock and we are going to really figure out ways to get our creative spark going and um, it's gonna be really fun and it's free and if you were not on my email, which is totally fine, you can just go to my website and there's a pop-up and you can just sign up for that too. So I'll be talking about that a lot more next week, but I just wanted you to know I got some like major steps done, which is to get the opt-in, <laughs> to get the opt-in so we can get that signed up. It is gonna be on Facebook, which you all have no problem because you're on Facebook. I know that there's some people who don't like Facebook, but for right now, I feel like it's the one place where I can do lives and we can create art together and it's not a big deal. Um, eventually, I want to do this free three-day thing and make it a bigger event and then I'll probably do that on Zoom. But for now, it's Facebook. I right, to so save the date. You don't have to be there for all three days and there will be replays. And then really exciting is my class for my side hustle. So anybody out there that wants to figure out how to sell their art, sell their jewelry, sell their craft, sell whatever they want, that's going to be ready for um, early registration on April 11th. Okay, April 11th. It's almost like a little heart. And that's gonna be for one week, $200 off. So that's a really great price. It'll be 98 bucks and it is, um, a huge court not a huge like it's not going to take you long but i'm going to span my tips and all the information from how to do etsy how to uh, how to do wholesale how to get into markets how to have open houses so it's like a little bit of everything so it's the 10 plate 10 places that you could sell your art and it doesn't have to be um you don't even need a website for most of it so it's just for people who have had that kind of urge to be like, I wonder if I could, or what would it be like to have some extra money by selling a few paintings? Because this is what I did for five years before I went full time. I just did it as a side business just to kind of see. So all of that's coming out. There's gonna be live Zooms with that class too, where you're gonna be able to ask me anything and even do a little coaching. So it's gonna be really exciting. So there's a lot going on. And you'd think that I'd be working my butt off tomorrow and today, but I'm not. I'm going to plant my Dahlia <laughs> tubers and then I'm going to um, Pinnacles tomorrow, which is a national state park to see the wildflowers. So I'm hoping I I'm hoping I find some. All right, so I'm having one more sip of tea and then we're gonna do our medallas. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm gonna cover as a, Angela, good question. I'm gonna cover as there's gonna be two bonuses because packing and shipping is not really a place. My two bonuses are going to be how to price your art and the other is going to be how to pack and ship. So you are all set. Okay. We're gonna flip us around. Hold on one second. And, oh, the sun is coming out. Look, you guys, I got Basil, her own little Betty. It's right in that chair. Do you see it? Where is it? Right there. Right there. Okay. And first I wanna show you, whoopsie. Let me just get, let's get ourselves sorted. All right, all you guys need is a pen and a marker. I'm getting myself straightened, hold on. A pen and a marker. Is, is in Pinnacle Square? I don't know, Kim. Kathy, is that uh, where we can see the condors? I hope we're gonna see lots of really awesome stuff. So, 
hold on. I'm gonna just get, I just wanna get a straight and show you a few things too. I think I need to put um, a sandbag on my tripod. And sometimes this tripod bait, you know, the new phones are so heavy that the one I have is a 12 plus or max. And there we go. So it's a little bit heavy. Okay. So what I wanted to show you first before we got started is these are some old dahlias I want to show you. But today I'm going to be working on um, just a little artist tile. And I love these artist tiles. They are six by six inches. It's how I do all my watercolor flowers. But they're kind of fun, especially when you do dahlias, you're gonna wanna, dahlias, especially when you do mandalas, you're gonna wanna turn your paper. So I find working on these are great, but I also really like working in my sketchbook and my art journal, and then you just have to turn it around too. Hi, mom, oh my gosh, I'm sneaking in. <laughs> okay, mom, have fun. My mom is doing a painting class with Paulette Dejere, and she's the one who did the peacock drawing and painting. So mom, make sure you post what you did in our group. We would love to see that. Um, this cute book. Oh, I think, Shane, are you talking about this one? Um, okay, you guys, I found this book and I wanted to talk about it because when I think about mandalas, I am not making it so rigid where everything is so perfect. For me, it's really just about um, kind of doodling, but doodling with a little bit more of an intention of what I'm trying to create. That's how, kind of how I think about it. So I found this book in my book journal. And, and I'm sorry, in my bookcase, I found it. I never even opened it. I bought it a few years ago. I love Lisa Condon. She is amazing. She has a podcast that's fantastic um, for artists. And she is a beautiful, I would say she's more of a graphic designer slash illustrator. And her work is incredible. And so um, her name is Lisa Condon. So you can sort of look and find her in all the Instagram, Facebook. I, mean, I don't know about Facebook, but look for her online. She also does these great books and a lot of them are really fun. So I thought we could flip through here because there's a, few, and this is a, like a coloring book and you can detach each page. You can color it in and detach it. I might do this as a giveaway, I think, um, because I haven't used it and it's so beautiful. But the reason I wanted to show you is because, voila, look at this, okay? Look at that. Oh, Manta is on. Hi, Manta. I'm sending you one of my sunflower um, paintings so you can give that away. I'm really excited about that. It's coming this week. I was a little bit behind schedule. Um, okay, so this is like what we have done in the past and sort of what I want to do today. And so you can think of your mandala as a flower, you know, and start from the center and work towards the outer, you know, outer shapes. But all of hers are like little bitty mandalas. And I just thought this was so beautiful. And I just wanted to share that. Don't think that your mandala has to be perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't at all. Um, mine definitely are not. And it's really just a really great way of kind of upping our doodling. I would say upping our doodling. And I'll just flip through a few more of these pages. Like, aren't these poppies just so gorgeous? You can do this type of drawing too, this sort of whimsical line work with your paint pen over a canvas. Um, there's so many ways that you can kind of do some of these shapes and get inspiration. So she took her flower, like let's say, let's say you did a mandala that was like this, and then she just turns them into her flowers. I mean, this page is just so fun. You could do a whole thing with black pen, and then you could even get it printed on some nice stock. You can even sell that. Like that's something that you can sell 
as a digital file even, or you can turn them into coloring books or coloring pages. Okay, I'm just gonna flip through a few more of these. You can see like this one is really fun too. This is kind of crazy, awesome doodling where you're just filling in all of the space. She does a lot of her stuff too with the Micron pens. I know that. I just love it. Love, love, love. So here's a few more circular ideas. And so the paper is nice and thick. It's smooth. It's perfect for markers. It would not bleed through to the other side. I'm gonna tell you um, too, the cost of it is not that much because it's on the back. But I love like these long ones and then so she's mixed some of her circular ones with some other flower shapes in here how fun that one is i think we're going to do something like this too in that three-day challenge because i really love it okay this was 12.99 I got it a few years ago, but I think I probably got it on Amazon. So it's a really affordable gift, especially like if you have, you know, any kind of age, whether you're, you know, seven all the way to 97. Um, this is just a really fun meditative way. I know people who feel that they are not up to doodling or drawing. It's not in their sort of, that's not what they think that they want to do, but they love coloring. So if you know somebody too that doesn't feel like I don't want to get out my pen and doodle, but they like to color, coloring is a very meditative, soothing way. And I really, really encourage everybody to just doodle anyway, but you could just start to color in your doodles. So Lisa Condon was from the Bay Area. She was from, I think, Berkeley and has moved up to Oregon. Oregon. And I'm so bummed because when I lived in San Francisco, I think she was just over the Bay. And I just didn't know, I didn't know her then, but I could have gone to a couple of her shows. Okay, you guys, I'm taking off my Ugg boots and I turned the heater off because <laughs> it's getting so hot. All right, so I didn't mean to spend so much time on that book, but I thought it was really fun because I just found it. <clears throat> All right, so let me just show you a couple of my mandalas and then we're gonna make one together. Um, All right, so I believe we did these. Let's see. So a few years ago, in the beginning of the pandemic, we did a lot of these doodling, the, the doodle roses, and we sort of were working with more like a Zentangle kind of approach where we were just adding in more shapes and designs. And then this one is just doing the same kind of thing, but turning it into a, a mandala. And I love having a heart in the middle. And I'll probably do that again today because that's just me, but you can always put anything in the middle. And somebody a few weeks ago was like, remember that one we saw with like the tulips? Put tulips in the middle. This is um, just a little doodle rose in the middle that sort of spreads out. And you can t t tell, like if I took my ruler, can you hear my cat? She's <laughs> she's going crazy. But if I took my ruler, things are not exactly going to be all even, and I'm fine with that. But if you really wanted to um, make your mandala perfectly even, you can use a ruler and draw some basic lines first before, like in pencil first, if you really wanted to. And then I just love, you know, that one where it's, the heart is colored in. I think that's, oh yeah, and then I got this one here too. So obviously, you know me, I just love the hearts. And so I thought we could do one today. This is also, besides the artist tile that I really like, you can also um, find studio watercolor paper that's hot press. This is super smooth. That's another one you can do it on. And then I just grabbed a whole bunch of pens because I never know what. 
I'm really bad. Like if the pens are kind of low or out, I should have them in a little section that says low or running out. But no, I throw them all together and then I think I'll figure it out, but I have no idea. Um, I have a bunch of different sizes here. I think the one that I would prefer to use would be this one in an, in a, um, and an S, but I don't think I have enough of them. So the eight micron is a little bit thicker. Let me just show you. And I wanted to do one where it was easy for you to see. So I might do it in the eight because I have a few of these with me. But you can do it whatever you want. There's another eight. The five is just gonna be a little bit thinner and this is actually navy. You can get different colors in these microns. And I'm sorry my fingernails are so gross because I literally have been in the mud. Um, what is this one? Oh, <clears throat> this one's kind of cool too. This is a brush. This is micron, but this is a brush. So you could do your Mandela's almost like painting. Okay, and then you don't have to have fancy pens. This is just a marker. And if I had a few of these, I might stick to this one, but I don't. And then what size is this? This is, this is an 08. So I have enough. Oh, I wanted to show you what a one is. So a one is gonna be thicker. Well, it should be thicker, look, but I ran out, it's it's a dud. Alrighty, so I've got my, make sure I'm at a good size. Yeah, there's so many awesome pens out there. So, all right, now I'm gonna tell you in advance, mine will not be perfect, especially if I'm teaching you, because of course nothing's perfect when you're live teaching. So I'm gonna start in the middle, and what you could do is, like if you kind of really wanted to be a little bit on it with your measurements, then just go right. Hold on, I know that that ruler against the tripod's making a noise, I'm gonna do it over here. All I'm gonna do is get my center point going, and that's this guy right here. So I just did three inches in, three inches out. And so there's my center. And you can then, I was thinking too, like to get started, you could take something that's round and draw a circle. Just, you know, and, and I'm this, I'm a little bit off. I'm not over my painting, so it's a little bit tricky. I might have to move what I'm doing. But this is just if we really wanted it to be professional, okay? So obviously not a great circle, but it gives you the idea of how you want your middle shape to be. All right, and um, I'll probably do like a little heart in there. So get going with getting your center ready and find your brush. And the whole purpose of doing this together with you guys is to you do anything you feel like you want to do. And it's, it's collectively making these mandalas that we can, you know, get some beauty and some joy out there today. It's really doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of go for it and, and uh, see what we get out of it. Because each time I do them, they're all a little bit different. So I'm probably going to do a smaller circle than that cap. I just wanted to show you how I would get started. And you can already see my circle's always a little bit wonky. But there's ways that you can correct your wonkiness. So for instance, I could go around it again and fix whatever I want to fix. Just keep that the way it is. I'm gonna go ahead and make myself my heart in the middle, or you could just do a circle in the middle. And maybe I'm gonna do some dots already. 
And you guys can ask me questions too, because I can definitely see the comments. My, my camera is so close to this picture. All right, so I'm going to ignore this second line I did for you guys. I'm just gonna kind of ignore it and work with it. I could incorporate it. I'm just gonna look at some of these, this one I like in particular. Um, all right, and so what I wanna do first is just start making some petal shapes. I'm gonna go around. Anything you do in pencil, I would just leave until you're finished and until this is dry. This might take a minute or two to dry. It is waterproof. And then you can take a real good eraser, you know, like even a kneaded eraser, and you can just erase your lines. The tip is to make sure that you've given enough time for your pen to dry. Will this be posted? I'm sick after you. Oh, Jill, sorry about that. Yes, of course. This live will go up right away, and you can always find the lives in the video section or the photo section, okay? And I'm sorry, booster crap. That stinks. Um, I do want to show you something that if, do you see how I've got the space left? What you can do is you can make a mark in your, you could make a mark right there because sometimes you could be doing all your petals and you get to the, almost the end and then it's all wonky and you, you don't have room to make two petals and it's one big fat one. It's just a way to kind of make sure that you are somewhat, they're somewhat similar in size. Remember, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just a little way. So now I've got my first round. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, what do I want to do? And I don't even know if these are an even amount, but you could go in and do another little half petal. I wish those boosters wouldn't make people sick. They don't always, but it's kind of a drag. I remember when I got my first booster, I actually got COVID, but not from it. So I never know <laughs> if I was extra sick or not because of the booster on top of it. Um, okay, I'm gonna go in now and just make a line. So what, what I like to do is add details as I go. Sort of decorate as I go. And let's see, now my next move, I'm going to, let's see, I've got three, is this a, will that work? Oh yeah, this actually might work. I mean, if you really did your, <laughs> if you did it properly, it would all mathematically work. But I'm going to, let's see, what kind of shape do I want to do? I'm going to do, hmm, I'm thinking out loud. I think I'm going to do another round shape. So I'm connecting three petals and I'm making a bigger petal on top of the three, okay? I'm gonna do that around the whole thing. Keeping it somewhat even if I can. This is where turning helps. Whoops. <laughs> Look how big that is. All right, I'm gonna show you how we fix that. But 
Not to worry if you don't have, you know, the even 12 little petals to make these six. It doesn't really matter. You can always adjust on the fly by kind of changing things up. Let's say you only had two here. Then you could sort of go over one and then go over one. It's really all good, you guys. Don't worry about that. But do you see how I made that so big by accident? Because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go on to my first one. And this was my last one I just did. And I'm just going to try and adjust my sizing here. There's lots of ways to fix things. Okay. What do we want to do next? What do we want to do next? Um, all right, I am going to add circles in between. These bigger petals. What's really fun about doing these is that you really don't need to know what your next step is going to be until you just look at what's what's the next step now you know you don't have to really think about how it's all going to look you can also find lots of these examples on pinterest and just copy whatever you like to get started that's another way to kind of just get started and see what's going to happen i'm thinking i want to do a triangle. All right, so now I'm going to make, I don't know why I wanted that triangle, but so this will end up being like a star shape. So now we're just adding on and <laughs> I'm just looking at some of my old dahlias because I mean, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm losing it. I keep calling my mandalas dahlias. <laughs> That's because they're on my mind. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to go in and put stripes, hmm, let me just think that through. Do I wanna put stripes there? Yep, yeah. I'm gonna go in and make these stripes. How fun is this? Mandalias, yes. <laughs> Patty, yes. Let's say that. Let's have a Mandalia club. That's why. Well, I'm just adding little details as I go. So you can think of zentangling and doodling and doing these all at the same time and add these little details. Um, what do I wanna add? Good morning, Maria. 
What do I want to add on to my triangles? Let me think. All right. Um, I feel like they're kind of plain, so I want to do something. I'm going to make them, I'm going to go across like this and give it a line. Now, do you see how this triangle is higher than this one? So I want to be careful to not do, like I was going to do little circles on the ends of my, my triangles, but I, I actually don't want to call too much attention to them because then I think the bigger you go, it will get really a little bit wonky. So I'm going to leave the triangles the way, the way they are and... Um, I'm gonna go in and just make another half circle here. Whoops, that guy's big. And the black marker will smear. I already have a little smear happening right there. So just be careful of that. <laughs> so the bigger you get, that's true, Maria. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, are you from Mexico? Awesome. Um, and I think that's why I love dahlias so much. And I love when I create them, it's from like that center that comes out and if you guys, I'm sure some of you know that I create these tea towels based from my watercolor drawings and I decided last week that I'm gonna do a dolly, I'm gonna do two new ones this year because I haven't done a new one yet. I'm gonna do a Dahlia one in all different sizes on a tea towel, It'll be so awesome. And then I'm also gonna do, cause everybody wants one, I'm gonna do a, a Christmas one of the holiday flowers. You know, so I need to do those soon actually, believe it or not. Um, okay, I'm going to do like little, I don't know what you want to call them. These are like little, happies. Yes, you can totally do rulers and compasses. Absolutely. I just don't. <laughs> but yes, you can really um, make it much more precise with all of that stuff. And then just erase your pencil lines. Have you guys ever seen the designs people do like on the beach and things that are huge and you look down on it? It's like, that's so crazy. I could never do that. Okay, what else do I want to do in here? I feel like these guys need some love. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into these petals, whatever we wanna call it, and I'm gonna add three lines. I'm sure most of you guys are really excited about 
spring, but I have to tell you, my mom is from Buffalo where I grew up. And on April Fool's Day, it snowed. That has happened so many times there that in April, it on April Fool's Day, it snows. How sad is that? Okay, my... My lines are wonky, but that's okay. You can't really even tell. It definitely starts to get like this 3D look to it. Isn't that fun? All right, now what is next? So as you can see, oh, sorry, Shauna, so stinks. I think I used to be so depressed at the time of year. Oh no, Patty, it's no, oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, I won't talk about snow. It's coming, you guys. Sunshine and spring flowers are coming to you and they'll be twice as beautiful, I'm sure. Um, okay, so I'm thinking, what do I want to kind of add on? Like you can um, take your, like there's so many things, fun things you can do. I'm going to zoom down a little bit so you can see what's happening here. Oh, you guys, bringing back memories. You could go in and put little dots. felt like a cough was coming <clears> through <throat> something. One of my allergies, <clears throat> I'm allergic to something out there right now. <clears throat> if I do, yes, 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 yes. I think it's, um, even, it, so I have a feeling that, let me see, I think I'm going to, it would be like April in the next week or so, I'm going to do the, um, uh, the rent, write the check. So uh, definitely within this week, if you do the sunflower course, for sure. And I'm gonna um, post about that when it's ready to go. All of that is so sad. I'm just praying that they are going to figure out a solution. I'd like to say I think it's heading that direction, but I don't know, but I hope, 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 hope. Alrighty. Now I'm thinking, what's my next step? So I've got my little dots and, okay, I just thought of something. I'm gonna connect, I think I tried to say this and I can't remember if I did or if I got off track, but what what is an, an, a good way to figure out how to build up your ma mandala is to connect the two things together. I'm connecting, 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 and then you keep on building off of that. And you go back and you can add details or, or go do details as you go, whatever you want to do. And then each time you could do a different shape. Like let's do, um, I don't know if the dots were a good idea. They're a little distracting right now. So I'm going to pretend the dots are not there. And I'm going to go into... I need to see something. Okay, I had to do it that way just to see what I was doing. So I'm going, there's two little petals here, two little here. I'm just doing one arch. 
so I want to go two and two. And this, the bigger you get, the harder it is to keep it kind of all looking symmetrical. So not too worry if that doesn't happen to you. And I'm kind of ignoring my dots right now because they're not perfectly put down. So it's all good. Oh boy, that's a big one. Yeah, they're, they're looking a little wonky. So I'm gonna do this ribbon thing I did at the very beginning where I can see like this one is really small, this one is really big. So I'm gonna go in and give this guy like a little extra ribbon. Let's call it a ribbon. Maybe that goes on the outside. This is just a way that you can adjust <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit wacky. Um, what is my next move? I gotta hold it up in front of my face. <laughs> I, I, I am a little bit wacky. All right. Um, I'm trying to think what I want to do next. I wish I could see all your mandalas, so maybe you guys can post them for me so I can check them out. All right, I'm gonna do like a little petal that's more like a petal. I like spinning this piece of paper. It's way easy to do this if you can move your paper around. Oh my goodness, these are so whacked. Whacked. I think I need to adjust them even more. I want to go in and do another. Round of ribbons. Hmm. About a leaf shape. Yeah, fill in the dots where you have dots. Yes, good idea. I like that. Fill in the dots. Golda. Well, that's a cool name. Golda. Yeah, look at this. And you can do, and a leaf shape's a good idea too. Isn't that pretty? And then the dots are still floating around, but that's okay. Oh wow, and then I've got this, oh, you guys, I've got the dot right in the middle of that petal, that leafy thing. Okay, oh, look at it though.
So I'm gonna turn the dots that are in these shapes and I'm just gonna make a big circle and color it in black. Yeah, when we're done with these, we can color them with markers. You could even take, and I think somebody was talking about this in the beginning or mentioned this in the beginning. Some of my mandalas I'll do with white gel pens over already a, pa a painted background. I'm gonna show you actually, because it's right over there. Okay, hold tight. Hold tight. I have saw it. I saw it yesterday. Oh, good. I found it. So <clears throat> on these sketchbooks, the the Ranger sketchbooks, this is a big one. Whoopsie. <laughs> Hold on. This is just a super old one, but you know, you can do you can put inks on the back of your Ranger journals and you could do this with watercolor or you could do this with acrylic inks, whatever you want. Um, and then this is just a white, one of those Signo um, Uniball white. And it's just a way to kind of have fun and just do it in a different color. All right, <laughs> thanks Diana. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do a few more things and then we'll pull our card and say goodnight. I almost said say goodnight. <laughs> that's, 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 how, um, that's how full my day has been and it's only 11. All right, what else do I wanna to add to this? So a lot of times too, I'll do these black and white ones and then I'll color in the center. I think I showed you that one before. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go around. Could you share a photo of the white one? It is beautiful. Oh, you're so nice. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little, let me pull it out so I can do that after. Um, it is just a way to, you know, prep your background pages and um, I'm gonna leave it out so I can do that prep your background pages and then you can add on that one was fun that was a lot of little details all right I'm going to do that sort of ribbon thing again here I don't know what do we want to call these it's almost like um a doily so those are six those are six I don't think that really matters too much but Hi, Chris. No worries. The replay will be there too. So I'm just making <laughs> some wonky, <laughs> some wonky shapes here. Frosting the cake. Yeah, that stuff. That stuff. I'm frosting. Okay. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna add. Feel like. Hmm. All right, let's see how this looks. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna make a line. I'm gonna extend these with a line. I'm trying to keep the lines the same. Somewhat, 
somewhat the same. Okay, and then I'm gonna go, wait. Hold on, I gotta look at it. Let me see if this works. I'm gonna go down. Oh, that's not gonna look good. <laughs> that's not gonna look good. That's okay. I'm gonna just go for it. Remember, it's practice and play, and it's for our well being and the bigger you get in your circle, the easier it is to have it become a little, <laughs> to have it to become a little distorted and wonky. So let's see if we can um, make some adjustments. Don't, I wouldn't recommend that, but you know, it's okay, whatever. <laughs> it's so funny though, how off I am, how, how off I became. Now it's starting to feel like less, um, it's a little kaleidoscopy actually. It's starting to feel a little less, you know, there's not so many details on it and that's okay too. You can then go in, like you can give yourself some of an eye break and then you can go in to this level next to it and then add more detail. Does that even make sense? Probably not. So let's add in, see what we can come up with. Yeah, these do, these, these do look like succulents. Isn't nature incredible? When you start to really think about, you know, even just flowers and succulents, how beautiful and symmetrical and unbelievably they grow, how they grow like that. I mean, it's just really quite amazing. Okay, I'm gonna do one more little thing. I'm gonna make my little doily circle-y thingamajiggies and add it around this last big loop. And then we're gonna pull a card. If anybody happened to see my stories yesterday, I don't know if they're still up. If you're on my Facebook or Instagram, we have such gophers here. They love my house. They are like my live-in residents. I'm feeding them and they took down a six foot by six foot agave. They ate a hole right through the middle. They came up through the middle of the whole entire thing. And it's such a bummer. Somehow, I lost my way here. Probably because I was yapping. So what I might want to do to like to bring the dots in is, bye Monta, I think Monta's leaving. I gotta, so bring in the dots, I think I'm going to just, work them into this design. You know, repeat, repeat. Put 
put a triangle on the corner. <laughs> okay. There's mine, but you can see how you can do so many. Let me move this up for a second. And for those who hopped on a little bit later, you know, so you can just keep going around and around and just finding like different ways to do your shapes. And when you find a shape that you like, you know, just repeat it and try using triangles, try using circles, try using the loop-de-doops, little doily loopies. Um, put in little flowers, like these are, let me scooch down. These are real like flowers. And look, look how wonky that one is too. It's all good. <laughs> but so you could even put flowers or something like of a, an, on a different shape. You know, what I try to do is if I have like these five lines, I actually try to do five lines, five lines around like that. Um, and it's all fun. It just really is fun. I'm gonna flip this though. Flip, flip, flip. There's a lot of people doing stuff outside right now. Can you hear? I love the lotus ones. Oh, let me show you guys the lotus one. So when I, oopsie, I'm gonna hold, oh my gosh, I'm like holding my arms so far away. This was a lotus that I was practicing on and then I ended up putting that on my painting, my Serenity painting. Um, so I was practicing. Okay, my cat is hiding. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, you know what I was gonna do and I forgot? All right, next time. I was actually going to leave the camera down so you could see some of these cards. Um, I'll do that next time. I forgot. I can't remember everything. I cannot remember everything <laughs> at all. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. All right, so let me pull my cards. This box is from the, there's three of them. This one is The Universe Has Your Back. You know what I think I might do too is um, get some of these boxes and do them as some giveaways. I think those are always fun. Okay, I am shuffling, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Okay, here, here are the cards. What are we gonna pull? Okay, this is a good one. Through prayer and meditation, I create a ripple effect of peace in the world. Oh, you guys, this is so needed right now. Isn't that beautiful? Through prayer and meditation, I create a ripple effect of peace in the world. I love that. So when, when I have my um, three-day little event that I'm doing in a couple weeks, I am going to be talking about creating you know probably do a little painting a little watercolor nothing nothing we're not going to be whipping out our acrylics and doing a big canvas but just like a little painting we'll do some drawing some doodling some stuff like that but i really want to do some mindful work as well and um walk you through like what my morning looks like because part of it is meditation and i am not you know the um like a like I still am learning, okay? I'm still learning how to do it. But I have to tell you, after years of doing it now, I really feel when I don't do it, I'm just a tiny bit off because I really do think it helps. And um, so I'm just really excited to do this like three-day event. I just think it'll be really fun. I probably will not do this Saturday <laughs> live after that event because, okay, so we're gonna do a three-day event here. Just me kind of doing what we did today talking, um, just sharing stuff that I love to do. And then my son asked if the prom dinner could be at my house. <laughs> That's 
the next day. <laughs> it's they're they're so wacky. Their prom, I feel bad for these kids. Their prom is on Friday the 15th of April. I mean, isn't that a little early? They just had their winter prom. So um we are doing prom here and he asked to do it. There's 24 kids coming. It's going to be really fun, but I might be a little bit tired on the Saturday. So we're going to, uh, so save the date, uh, 12th, 13th, 14th. And, um, I'm really excited. And if you're not in my newsletter list, hop on my newsletter list. Cause next week I'm going to send out a little thing to just ask you guys, like if there's anything in particular you want to learn or draw or do, we can do it. It's going to be really fun. So you guys have such a great weekend. And for those where there's snow, just remember there's sun coming right around the corner and you're going to have twice as many flowers because you have that beautiful cold crisp and I don't have it here. I can't grow peonies because of it. So, um, and share your, share your mandalas. I would love, love to see them <laughs> and keep drawing, keep doodling. Don't you feel better? I mean, seriously, we must all feel better, right? I, I know I do. So we did that for my daughter's prom dinner that ma, the mom stressed, Oh my God, that's such a great idea. I'm having a mom meeting. <laughs> I'm having a mom meeting on Sunday. <laughs> I love that idea, Kathy. That is so great. Okay. I told my son, my uh, the prom for my kid's school is um, you have to be a junior or a senior, which is funny because when I was in high school, it was seniors only, but you have to be a junior or a senior and then you can go. And so my son is a sophomore and my other son is a sophomore I and mean, he's friends with all of those guys. And so, <laughs> so I said he could serve. <laughs> Maybe he could be black and white too. That'd be fun. And I look me, I'm in black and white today anyway. Mwah! And I will take uh, lots of photos for sure. Okay, you guys, love you tons. Keep on creating and I'll share wildflower photos with you after Sunday. Okay, bye-bye.